به برنامه نانگاراستان خوش اومدید سلام به همگی من مریم نمازی هم و من فریبرز پویا هستم قبل از برنامه دوست داریم تسلیت و همبستگی و همدردی خودمون رو با مردمی که تحت زلزله منطقه زلزله زده به سر میبرند عزیزانشون رو که از دست دادن یا الان بیخانه بدون آب و غذا دارن به سر میبرن واقعا وضعیت خیلی دردناکیه دقیقا ما میخوام هم بستگیمون رو ابراز بکنیم و از همه بینندگان این برنامه بخوایم که کمک بکنن از کانال های غیر دولتی و اونجایی که سازمان های انتفاهی و مردمی و اومدن در واقع جای اون جایی که امداد وجود نداره رو پر کردن جمهوری اسلامی فقط سلفی میگیره با این وضعیت و سعی میکنه از این فرصت استفاده کنه ما از مردم میخوایم که مستقیما به کمکی و هر طریقی که میتونن به کمک مردمی که شدیدن احتیاج به کمک دارن بشه دارن. در برنامه این هفته در مورد کیس نازنین زقاری رتلیف و اینکه الان در صدر اخبار صحبت خواهیم کرد و وضعیت دو ملیت هایی که بازداشتن در زندان های جمهوری اسلامی ایران دقیقا مصاحبه این هفته با استاشا زجوویچ در رابطه با دادگاه زنان در بلگراده فتوه احمقانه همون از هندوستانه و اینکه دختران ده ساله تا زنان پنجا ساله اجازه ندارن وارد معبد هندو بشن به خاطر اینکه مشکل به وجود مشکل به وجود میاره و اخبار زیبا لحظه زیبا زیبای زندگیمون آزادی یک بلاگر موریتانیایی که به خاطر ارتداد حکم اعدام داشت ولی الان آزاد شده جای نرید با ما باشید کیس نازنین زقاری رادکلیف یک مادر ایران انگلیسی که الان در ایران در زندان اوین به پنج سال زندانی محکوم شده الان در صدر اخبار یه دلیل رشم اینه که به خاطر که بارس جانسن گفته بود در پارلمان که ایشون برای آموزش به خبرنگاران مثلا به ایران سفر کرده بود و اگر رفته بود چه اشکالی دارین حرف آره. اینطوری زده بود آره. و این به نظر من قضیه کیس کیس نازنین رو توی صد اخبار رو برد و این به این خاطر بد نشد به خاطر اینکه همه مردم میتونن ببینن که نازنین رو بیگناه دستگیرش کردن توی سلون انفرادی نگرش داشتن شکنجهش کردن شوهرش در مقاله که توی گاردین نوشته بود از شرایطی رو که توی زندان بوده و زندان های جمهوری اسلامی هست صحبت کرده و این شرایط رو توی سطح دنیا افشا کرده ولی همه میدونن که گروگانگیری یکی از سیاست های جمهوری اسلامی گروگانگیری دو تابعیتی که مردم دو تابعیتی کسایی که میرن ایران هم برگردن اینو استفاده میکنه در سعی میکنه که باجگیری بکنه از دولت های غربی و اونا هم به خاطر اینکه هوادار جمهوری اسلامی ان بسعی میکنن باش سازش بکنن این این بازی رو ادامه و سود و تجارت براشون اهمیت داره نه حقوق انسان و خب میبینیم که بارش جانسن برای مثال حاضر نشده بود که با شوهر نازنین ملاقات برای کنه چندین سال. برای چند سال برای چند سال نه الان الان فقط برای اولین بار اخیرا باش ملاقات کرد به خاطر اینکه تو صدر اخباره و تحت فشار بوده و حتی حاضر نبوده که به خاطر این اشتباهی که کرده که امکانش هست که خب جمهوری اسلامی سالهای زندانیش رو افزایش بده باره. تازه مثلا قبول کرده علتی هم که نمیخوان حرف بزنن به خاطر اینکه فکر میکنن که یعنی بعد با جمهوری اسلامی سازش بکنن ولی این نشون داد که افکار عمومی میتونه وضعیت عوض بکنه فشار گذاشتن رو دولت انگلیس که بتونه نازنی رو برگردونه و در واقع همه دولت دولت های دنیا مردم دنیا یاد بگیرن که فشار افکار عمومیه که تنها میتونه اینا رو آزاد بکنه سازش و روابط دیپلماتیک سکوت و پشت پرده هیچ کمک هیچ کس توی دنیا نمیتونه بکنه و خب واقعا وقتی به این کیس نازنین زخاری نگاه میکنیم واقعا یه تراجیتی انسانیه میدونین یه مادریه که الان مثلا دخترش الان 19 ماهه که پدرش رو ندیده جمهوری اسلامی اجازه نمیده پدرش بیاد ایران که همسرش رو ببینه و بچهش رو ببینه دخترش دیگه این فارسی فقط حرف میزنه با پدرش دیگه نمیتونه حرف بزنه و فکرم واقعا چقدر واقعا چه تراجیتیه و مثلا شوهرش وقتی صحبت میکنه از اتفاقاتی که به نازنین افتاده واقعا اینی که آدم دلش واقعا کباب میشه, کباب میشه. آره. و, بف... و واقعا 
وقتی آدم فکر میکنه که نزدیک سی نفرن که دو, دو ملیتی هن که توی زندان های جمهوری اسلامی هن من جمعه کمال فروغی سیامک و باقر نمازی احمد رزا جلالی و خب سعید ملکپور و اینا خب کیسایی هن که واقعا خیلی هاشون زندانی های دراز مدت دارن یا حکم اعدام دارن و خب جدا از این هم خب خیلی هم هستن که زندانی سیاسی هم تو ایران دقیقا. و این تجربه رو هر روز دارن و واقعا نگاه میکنیم میبینیم که چطوری امکان داره که یه دولتی که انقدر وحشیه انقدر سرکوب کرده انقدر نقص حق انسان رو نقص میکنه به عنوان یه دولت به رسمیت شناخته شده و تجارت و اینا رو مهمتر میدونن تا حق کسی که تو این زندان ها حقوق بشر باید در صدر اولویت ها باشه و تنها افکار عمومی به همبستگی بین المللی مردم که میتونه این این رو به کرسی بنشونه و اگه ولی اگه دست دولت ها بذارین هیچ وقت هیچ انسانی رها نخواهد شد Now I'd like to also talk to you about the court. Uh, I mean, this was an, a hugely important event, uh, not just for Serbia and the Balkans, but I think internationally it was an important uh, uh, occurrence. Can you explain uh, what the aims of the court were? And also I want you to tell us a bit about the process, because I think yeah, it will yeah. help others who want to set up courts, similar Mi courts. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yes, we uh, since the beginning we yes we learn a lot of experience women's court, but we didn't want to copy uh, 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 instead of copy <laughs> uh, we decided to create our model of uh, women's court all always uh, mm, encouraged by witnesses uh, this was the process of uh, 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 exchange of knowledge. Uh, of witnesses, that does mean uh, mm, survivors, uh, academia women, <laughs> artists, art collectives, or of course, organizer, ten organization, the women and we coordinate the whole the process. And uh, it is the unique, uh, I think, unique, our women who are unique because uh, put together women from all, uh, from all, 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 all ex Yugoslavia countries. All ex Yugoslavia countries, you know. Uh, it is seven countries. It is not, it wasn't easy. This process uh, put together women, and thanks to this organizing process, they change their uh, uh, stereotypes about each other. Uh, that Serbs are aggressors, that uh, uh, no Serb women are uh, 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 um, victims. For Serbs uh, who, uh, who uh, uh, participated, it was very, very easy to face Bosnian women. I'm speaking not about activists, I'm speaking about grassroots women. For them, for one, it was very difficult to pronounce, to speak in presence of uh, Bosnian women, of Croat or Albanian women. In this process they told, yes, uh, uh, Bosnian women, they never know that in Serbia there are resistance against forced mobilization, against militarism. It, this, uh, it uh, helped to change these uh, stereotypes and narratives about war in Yugoslavia, also for women of Yugoslavia. And, and, uh, it was also beautiful process uh, thanks to uh, 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 thanks to uh, 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 links of uh, re friendship relation, but also for academia women, for a lot of academia women who participate in our process because they are so-called experts who, uh, uh, in the moment of uh, who. Uh, analyze who made the analysis for them was very difficult that we thought that no your analysis should be made on base of experience of, of this women uh, experience uh, of this women uh, shouldn't be uh, uh, put in your models in your in your uh, you know in your patterns 
you have to be guided by these women like us. And so and the main actors of the process were, with, were witnesses until now. And we created this community of victims, of uh, witnesses. They are they took responsibility to encourage other women. You know, organize uh, now mini women's court in their region, etc., etc. And also creating a lot of other activities together. They made uh, not all of women who participate, who, who uh, uh, testify in, in Sarah, or, or, or 40, uh, 36 women, but one, one group of 20, 20 women, they are very hard, they became activists, all of them participating on different kind of activism, you know. I don't know, also in all our activities, not only as peace activities and also in anti-militaristic activity, etc., etc. It is the one of the... And also uh, they, uh, they were encouraged by this process to, uh, to, uh, uh, so for, to make some legal, uh, legal, bet, legal problems to issue. Also uh, testimonies of uh, women uh, served to institutional legal system, legal system to, for example, reparation for rape in some case in Croatia, etc., etc. And this is the, a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of uh, benef, benef, I don't know, a lot of results of this. But I think politically, morally, it is the big, big uh, event, especially because we continue, we will continue. We don't know how, what will happen. We know that we will continue. It all, mm -hmm. What were the aims of the? Uh, what were the uh, areas that you looked at in the court, and uh, what decisions? Uh, all did kind. You uh, yes, all kind of violence. We cannot separate gender violence uh, from uh, ethnic, militaristic, uh, uh, class, social, uh, uh, ethnic violence. It is not possible. You know, it is not possible. And we, of course, we work in those level. For example, uh, in some region, what were the problems in whole region that we live so called, so called. Uh, it is not peace as absence. It is peace as absence of war. But it is not just peace. And women are really refused. And women don't trust to legal institutions. Neither in uh, special courts for war crimes organized in different parts of Syria, because uh, they don't. Uh, this legal system score. They don't satisfy needs. They 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 are oh, 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 they are. Uh, mm, Predominant in whole region, pre uh, impunity is predominant in level of society and also in level of state. But my exp one of the experiences that they, women, they don't trust in so-called legal system, but we, 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 uh, we, we, of course, respect Hague Tribunal, despite of a lot of death problems with Hague Tribunal, etc., etc. Women believe in restorative justice, in alternative way of justice, and they need to be recognized as actors of social process, and they reject to be reduced to passive victims. This, and they need dignity, and they need uh, autonomy, and be, uh, be, you know, be recognized as uh, human beings, less with their uh, 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 dreams, with their, you know, with their wishes, and they are, uh, they are big source of, uh, for me, big source of knowledge. Uh, of uh, uh, knowledge about international policy and uh, for me as a feminist it was important that I we, we created together the space to speak about differences to speak about uh, our different different points of view of different of few areas uh, anyway this is the very beautiful and challengeable and I don't know how it is no we are working and uh, without uh, Mm, be be pressed be, without this pressure and so but for other part we have big problem with donors because we don't accept any imposition of donors it is very difficult we try to create some different way anyway it is not easy but anyway uh, can I ask you a final question yes. is on the issue of retribution uh, I mean uh, what do you think about uh, what what is justice? Because some will say justice is retribution. I'm sure for you women, don't agree justice that. Is, uh, but no, no. but can you explain? Can you explain that? For example, a lot of women told me. For example, especially Srebrenica women victims or the, uh, the the the, big, the biggest atrocity in this space. We don't need we don't need this jail for 100 years. For we we need to be recognized. We need 
we, we, we need to be respected. And also, yes, of course, but more than a lot of women told me, more than uh, punishment, more than prisons, we need um, space um, for um, uh, 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 in space to uh, speak out about what's happened. For example, in case of Serbia, uh, uh, whose regime uh, rejected for years until now to recognize genocide of Srebrenica. This is our big battle. I believe me that is uh, is more important that Stre uh, Serbian regime recognize that Serbia is one of the pillars of the genocide. You know, because without Serbian regime, military, financial, and all uh, 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 all political uh, support. Srebrenica genocide is not, you know, it's not possible, you know, it is, we know, and this recognition is, we, we would, should be one of the big, very, very important moral and political point for this, for uh, for whole community, because the rec what does mean reconciliation? The reconciliation is process of restorative justice without responsibility, without assume responsibility it is does it is an empty word we, we really don't we avoid to, to uh, even use this concept of response of uh, uh, reconciliation we use trust uh, solidarity or for example uh, responsibility ethic of responsibility etc etc because people really are fed up with this extreme abuse of victims of uh, from international community for all oh, for all uh, regimes in this country, uh, in this region, etc. Especially community victims are submitted to terrible, terrible abuse anyway, and that's why in our work we use, all, we speak about these abuses, you know. And uh, uh, this is the restorative. Yes, uh, uh, it doesn't mean that we reject legal system. No, no, no. Uh, without Hague Tribunal, oh, it was more difficult. We support in a lot of issues. We don't have time now to speak about the, the, the problems of Hague Tribunal. Big, uh, big, uh, our uh, 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 critiques to Hague Tribunal. But, uh, uh, and we also uh, support women to uh, testify in uh, uh, these courts, of course, but we need, we need to create a new way uh, uh, of justice, uh, not legal, on, not only the law, but justice. We, this is, I think this is our responsibility, especially for our part for Serbia anyway. Maybe for me it's easier because I live in Serbia and I have to assume big responsibilities sometimes it is easier anyway for one side it is easier for other side it is big it was during the 25 years it was also big risk <laughs> because go uh, decide to go to community victims without knowing it was very big challenge it was very big big risk if we don't have, we didn't have any experience in this. We didn't, we couldn't learn from other side. But risk, <laughs> challenge. It is was not. It is, yeah. It is. It is good. Yes. It is good results. It is good in human, in human, and it's also uh, in uh, in feminist uh, uh, knowledge for feminist knowledge and for the militarism and so yeah. Always uh, disobedient. Your yes, motto. always disobedience. It is also everywhere women uh, come in, they like this, and so we explain each other. It is beautiful, and uh, yes, you you said yeah yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, so yes, uh, resisting resisting is yeah, resisting is hope, and it is also joy, and we laugh, we, we sing, and it is nice. Yes, uh, it is hard, but I don't know. It is also. Thank you. معبد سبری ملا در هندوستان رئیس رؤساشون ملاهای هندوشون گفتن که کسایی که زنان و دختران بین سال ده سالگی تا پنجاه سالگی اجازه ندارن وارد این معبد بشن چرا مگه به خاطر اینکه فساد میاره اگر دخترها و زنا وارد بشن چون زنان فساد میارن 
معلومه پس چی دیگه الان و... این البته بکنم که اون مذاهب خیلی سلامیز هم هست ها خیلی خیلی خیلی, خیلی سلامیزه چون این تمام مذهب ها میگه سلامیز هم الان احساس حرامش میکنه من هم طرف داره زلن همشون و گفتن که خب فساد میاره و اگر که ادامه پی... اگر مثلا اجازه دادگاه اجازه بده که زن وارد این اینجا بشن مثل تایلند میشه آه چون زن ها تجارت سکس و فساد و اخلاق یعنی اگر زن وارده مثلا جای مذهبی بشه اینجوری بچی ها ده ساله گفته ولی فکر کنم یک شم در این معبده یه بالای کوه کی میتونه همه را بره اون بالا من گفتم که نگران خود زنان و دخترانن نمیخوان تبعیز قایل بشن میگن که بیچاره زن ها باید بالای اون تپه برن تو هوای بد اینا خیلی و... میخوان هوای بارونی طوفان باشه گرگا اونجا مثلا دو... دو مثلا چیز کنه اینا نباید برن مثلا سخت چقدر میخوان از مردم وضعیت کنه بعدم البته همیشه یه تهدید هم هست توی همشون سلحا میزن تهدید سلحا میزن میگن که اگر که زن ها وارد این اینجا بشن نمیتونیم امنیتشون رو تضمین کنیم یعنی چیکار می‌کنن دقیقاً صحبت های کم ولی گفتم ما پلیس بیاریم پلیس باید بیاریم که ازشون دفاع کنیم ولی پلیسا باید زن باشن دیگه چون زن یا باید یا باید زیر 9 سال باشه یا بالا 50 ساله مگه نه برم پلیس بشم ولی خیلی این این مذهب صلح آمیز هندو فکر کنم نگران خداشونن به خاطر که خدایی که اونجا مخصوص تو معبد هست معبده خدایی که سکس نداره هیچ وقت نداشته و فکر کنم نگرانم که اگر امکان داره ورژینیتی شو و در واقع چیز در دست بده این یه خورده مذاهب سل آمیز با چماغ سل خود چیز میکنن اجرا میکنن تو جامعه و خیلی زن آران دوست دارم اینقدر موازب راهایی زن آزادی زن اصلا نمیدونم چرا تمام مذاهب اینطوری ها همه همشون هم آزار زن هستن چرا؟ آزادی محمد مخطر یک بلاگر موریتانیهیه که از چند سال پیش حکم اعدام گرفته بود به خاطر پستی در فیسبوک که گفته بود اسلام نقش داره در پیشرفت تبعیز اجتماعی و بردداری همین چون نقش رو که توی قدرت اجتماعی داره و اینو مورد سوال قرار داده بود به همین خاطر دار دسته اراز لوباشه مهر ارتداد زدن به و توهین به مقدسات توی خیابون را رفته بودن و دولت این رو دستگیر کرده بود و چندین سال تحت حکم اعدام بود ولی تحت فشار بین المللی و اعتراض مردم اخیرا قراره که آزاد بشه و این خبر خیلی خوبی برای تمام آزادن نشان در سر سر دنیا خیلی هم خبر خوبیه به خصوص چون ما هر روز خبر به دستمون میرسه از کسانی که به خاطر ارتداد یا توهین به مقدسات بازداشت شدن یا حکم اعدام دارن و مشخصه که این یک پایه واقعا عقب موندگی و ارتجاز تو هر جامعه یعنی جامعه که واقعا مدرن جامعه باید باشه که افراد آزادی بیان داشته باشن, بیان داشت باشن. و خب بالاخره خبر خیلی خیلی خوب این پیروزی خیلی مهمیه و این ما رو میاره به پایان برنامه این هفته امیدوارم که از برنامه این هفته خوش نومده باشه تا هفته آینده گفت
Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators it's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.